Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And we're just really thrilled that you're here with us again this morning on uh, this particular session of our podcast. I want to talk to you today and title this this episode, It's About Time. And I want to read a verse from Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And the Bible said there, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. But I want to talk to you about that very first uh, few words. It says, and that knowing the time. And then it says, and that now. So I want to talk to you about just what do we know about time? Uh, I'm going to give you a few definitions of the word time. Time. So one of the definitions is this. Time is the continued sequence of existence. Another definition is it is the measured or measurable period during which an action or a process or condition exists or continues. Another definition is it is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events that took place in the past or the present or that will take place in the future. One more. And another definition is that it is a particular portion of duration. Now, we know that we talk about time, that humans are creatures of time, and we are preoccupied with it, with the theme of time. We have calendars, we have clocks and watches, all to try to keep track of time. We talk about time in seconds, minutes, and hours days, weeks, months, and years. We often refer to time as daylight to dark or from noon to midnight. And there's other things that people use uh, as sayings to refer to time. But clearly, there is a span and an error between a beginning and an end of a thing. And for the lack of a better expression, we call that uh, that error or that span between a beginning and an end, we call that time. Now, God does not count time like we do, not like humans do. Uh, the reason is that God is above and outside of the sphere of time. God sees all of eternity. He sees eternity past, and he sees eternity future. Now, actually, we know that time is short. Matter of fact, we look at the lifetime of humans, and Adam, the first man that was ever created, In the Garden of Eden, Adam lived 930 years, and then he died. Or Methuselah, who lived longer than any human, he lived to be 969 years, and then he died. But our days, the Bible said, are three score and ten, or in other words, 70. The Bible said, or if by reason of strength 
or if you're strong in your body and you take care of your body, then uh, the Bible said we can live four score years or 80 years. Actually, the Bible also mentions that we can lengthen the days of our life by honoring our father and our mother. You want to live a little extra, all of you that's listening to me, honor your mom and dad, respect them and be good to them. But no matter, we know that time is so short. Now, Paul, the apostle in the New Testament, he makes a difference between the temporal and the eternal uh, because that uh, the temporal things, they're the things that we can see and the eternal things are things that we have not and cannot see. And he makes that difference. If you want to find it for yourself, you can look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Now, the psalmist in the book of Psalms chapter 90 and verse two, he tells us about God. He says that God was from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So we live, whether it's 960 years, 969, 70 years, 80 years, it doesn't really matter. I knew a friend of mine that actually lived to be 100 years and 100 days old. Not many people live to that age. Usually if you live that long, they'll put you in the newspaper. They'll be talking about you somewhere. So even if you think of a lifespan of 100 years, our lives are really short. And I... I want to go to something here I had down. I want to just tell you about one man was asked. He said, what, what would you say is your best definition of time? This man said, well, I know time is fast when you're late. Time is slow when you wait. Time is endless when you're in pain. Time is short when you're happy. Time is deadly when you're sad. Time is long when you're bored. So when time is determined by our feelings and our psychological conditions, at that point in time and at no other time, not determined by a clock at all, but determined by uh, the Lord. So if you notice that, he said, time is slow when you wait. Time is endless in pain. Time is deadly when sad. Time is long when you're bored. But he did say that time is short when you are happy. In other words, uh, you want that time to go on because you're happy right then. But Time is fast. He said, when you're running late, you seem like you're never going to get there. So anyway, we view time so many different ways as humans. I want to tell you, though, though time itself really doesn't possess any intrinsic power belonging to nature or essential uh, but it rather allows opportunity for other forces to work or to take place. For instance, uh, a miracle which produces instant and immediate effects. But time cannot do that. It cannot produce an instantaneous effect. But time can cause the body to heal, or the spirit to heal. We know that can uh, take place also. Or it's like a wound. 
Maybe you have a wound in your heart. Your heart has been broke. And at the time that the breaking of your heart, it seems so unbearable initially. But over time, that heart can heal back and you can look differently at your situation. I just want to talk to you a little day about time. What time is it? I know that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says in the beginning. So Genesis 1, 1 in the Bible was the beginning. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So when there was darkness on the face of the deep and nothing was anywhere, God created the heavens and the earth and thus time as we know it began. But Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, excuse me, in verse 23, concerning the resurrection, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Verse 24 says, then cometh the end. So I'm going to finish that verse in a moment, but the Bible said Genesis 1 in the beginning, and Paul is telling the church in the 15th chapter of Corinthians, the end is going to come. So here he said, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. So friend, if you think your life's going to last forever, it's not. If you think eternity is going to last forever, I mean, excuse me, that the world as we know it's going to last forever, it is not. The end is going to come. So I ask you today, knowing this, about time, what little bit we've learned here this morning. What time do you think it is? What time is it in your life? I don't know the age of your life, the health of your body, and I don't know what time it is for you. But I can tell you what time it is for every single person listening to this podcast where the Bible said it is time to repent. It is time to seek the Lord. It is time to get ready. It's time to fall on the mercies of God and ask him for salvation. I know this. In Hebrews 1 verse 11, all the created universe as we know it, the Bible said, will perish. Second Peter 3, verse 10 and 11 says, the elements will be dissolved and pass away. Another place, he said it will melt with fervent heat. So I'm just trying to help you today and let you know that We're living in a late day. We're living in the last days or the last time. Time will not last forever. Get ready today. Let me give you just a few things Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us. He said in verse 1, to everything there's a season and a time and to every purpose under the heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, 
a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weak and a time to laugh, time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to live and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So we see all of these things that the Bible tells us there is a time for everything. So I've tried my best to give you a little bit. Uh, there's no way that I could tell you all about time since it's been going on uh, since the beginning, since God created the heavens and the earth. But I'm trying to get you to see this morning that you might not have as much time as you think you do. So if I were you, I would use my time wisely. I would make up my mind that I was going to spend my time. You can't do anything about the time that's you know, in, in the past, but you can do something about today. So if I wasn't a born-again Christian, I would give my life to Jesus Christ, repent, and become a child of God through the new birth in his, in his blood. Today, if I were you, after that, I would spend my time trying to get closer to God, trying to be good to all of mankind, and trying to use my time as wisely as I could. Well, I'll tell you something a little humorous. My time's about gone for this podcast. So we're going to wrap it up and hopefully see or not see you, but be with you again next Monday morning with a new word for your week from Pastor David Miller. God bless you is my prayer. Have a great day rest of your time and a great rest of your day. God bless.